any number that cannot be written as a fraction is always an infinite non-repeating decimal. Examples. Let me give you an example. Square root of three is an irrational number. Because if I type the square root of three into my calculator, square root of three, it's an infinite non-repeating decimal. Even though it's it ends right if this screen, this calculator screen ends at the tens, hundred thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billions, ten uh hundred billions, trillions. It stops at the trillions place. In reality, it actually goes on forever without repeating. Notice how none of the numbers repeat one after the other. So square root of three would be an uh, irrational number. Now the reason why they call it irrational is because it's beyond our rational faculty that is described. Those rational faculties that allow us to involve ourselves in logical thinking that allow us to laugh and have humor and do calculus. These numbers are beyond it. Hence the word irrational, against reason. They're mysterious. Okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and just estimate them. Um, we can estimate it to the tenths place. We can approximate to the hundreds place thousands and so on. I'll always specify what I want you to run it to. So let's run it right now to the nearest tenth. So that's the seventh the seventh slot. I look to the right of it. If it's five or bigger, it goes up. If it's not, it stays the same. So we'll just approximate to the nearest tenth. So this is approximately approximately 1.7. Okay? Approximately. Okay. Now, um, what I want to cover now is simplifying a radical. I'm going to write simplifying an irrational, how about that? an irrational number. Simplify the irrational number. Okay. Simplify an irrational number. Write that down in the notes. Now, when you guys were in junior high, there's these strange, well, not strange, there's just some accepted math rules that are kind of like proper etiquette for proper manners uh, when doing mathematics. For instance, if you have the fraction two fourths, it's bad math matters, kind of like chewing with your mouth open in the dinner table. It's bad mathematical matters to leave two fourths unsimplified. Whenever you have two-fourths or a fraction like it, you have to simplify the fraction. Two-fourths reduces to what? So it becomes one-half, huh? So two-fourths becomes one-half. It's a rule of mathematics that just has to do with convention and, and good manners. Isn't it? It's bad. Even, two, even though two-fourths is technically not wrong if you left your answer as two-fourths, it's just bad manners. You always have to simplify. What I'm about to teach you is kind of the same thing. If you have a square root of, let's say, 20, is that an irrational number, square root of 20? Yeah. Give me an argument. Any guess? How come it's irrational? 
Good. There's no two numbers that multiplied by each other that's the same. That would be 20. Square root of 9 would be rational. That becomes 3. But square root of 20, like any here said, is irrational. Matter of fact, just for the sake of the knowledge, let me type in square root of 20. Excuse me? Can you guys be spanking, man? Check this out. Square root of 20? So any guess is right? It's 4.5 approximately. But here's what I'm going to teach you now. Watch. Even though approximating square root of 20 is approximately 4.5, I'm going to write approximate on your notes, please. What I'm going to do is show you how to simplify the square root of 20 and not leave it as an approximate. And some of you may have seen this before. Maybe last quarter. So let's get into example one. Here we go. Check it out. One second. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Break it down? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so check it out. Uh, square root of 20, let's simplify. So example one, let's simplify the square root of 20. In other words, I don't want the approximate answer here. I don't want you to just simply take, uh, type this in the calculator and then run in your attempt. Would it be 4 and 5? Well, let's see. Here's what we're going to do. If it's an irrational number, like square root of 20, we're going to break it down. And we're going to break it down into two separate square roots that are factors. And we're going to make sure one of them is a perfect square. <coughs> now, when I say perfect squares, Let's think about perfect squares here. Perfect squares are like the numbers 4. The square root of 4, that becomes 2. The square root of 9 becomes 3, and so on. The square root of 16 becomes 4. The square root of 25 becomes 5. Dot, 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 dot. It goes on to infinity. So what I want to do is kind of what I already need guys and a lot of guys are thinking of. I'm going to break square root of 20 down into two factors. i got to make sure one of the factors comes from this list right here. Perfect squares list. If I'm not able to figure out a perfect square that fits into 20, then I'm done. I can't simplify the perfect. I can't simplify the irrational number. But 4 fits into 20. So square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Notice how 4 times 5 is 20. Right. Notice how this is a perfect square here, this one. Even though the square root of 5 is not a perfect square, this one is. So now I'm going to go and continue to simplify. The square root of 4 becomes 2, and I just put the square root of 5 right next to it. So last quarter, my math research from last quarter, you remember this. You guys are kind of at the advantage. Can I hear that? Any of you guys in bottom that can see that? Go oh, Mr. Yeah, cool. You remember that? Sorry, forgive me. Please, please. Example two. So, before we go on, two two rad five is the same as square root of twenty. Two times square root of five is the same as square root of twenty. If you type this in your calculator, you get the same thing on the square root of twenty. They're the same thing. This is just a simplified version of that. That's all we're doing right now. We're just simplifying irrational numbers. Let's try another one. Square root of forty. Let's simplify the square root of 40. 4 and 10? Why 4? Well, why the number 4? Perfect square. So, you want one perfect square factor, and any guys just shouted it out. Rad 4 is definitely a factor of 40. Rad 10 is definitely a factor of 40. 
Notice how square root of 4 is a perfect square. Right, Lopez? So I got 2 rad 10. Just got that. So that's, this is a simplified version of that. 2 rad 10. One last one, and we're done. Easy lecture today. Easy lecture. Yeah, coming up. Good theater in your ears. Rad. 200. Square root of 200. 20 is not a perfect square, neither is 10. 25 and 8. I like it. All right. Here we go. Uh, 200 is an irrational number. Let me just verify that for those of you who are doubting me. I know a lot of you doubt me. Square root of 200? Okay. 14 point blah blah blah. It's irrational. So let's go and fix the blah blah blah. Hit it, any guess? 102. Look at that. Which one's a perfect square, any guess? 100's a perfect square. So that becomes 10, let me talk to him, 10 rad 2. Let's go with the, the other route that Grenada mentioned, though. Let me do it again over here on the right. Grenada mentioned two other types of uh, factors, one of them being a perfect square. I think he said 25 and 8, huh? Check it out. Let's go to the haters route. Let's look at the same thing, though. Watch. Square root of 25 is 5, rad 8. But rad 8, I can still break down because there's a perfect square factor of 8, which is 4 and 2. Notice what we got now. Square root of 4 is 2, and then I'll bring on the square root of 2 because I can't break that down anymore. And then the 5, bring, I bring it down. Normal number times normal number is going to be 10, so I got 10 rad 2. Same thing. Right. So it's like a review of last place. Right. This is a longer route. It's a shorter route. In other words, the bigger the factor, the quicker the route. Did you? When I get.